Starship Troopers Extermination is here, and this might finally be the Starship Troopers game I've been waiting for. Ever since I was a teenager and I watched the film the first time, and, you know, all the political satire and all of that went completely over my head, but I was amazed by those action sequences where you had hordes of bugs smashing up against the walls of a military base, soldiers firing down on them before finally being overrun. The bugs looked so cool, the guns looked so cool. It was just amazing. It was such a spectacle. And this game really captures that. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my daily gaming news podcast. I record it every weekday morning, 9am British time, right here on youtube.com forward slash geeky pastimes. But you can also listen to it on things like Spotify, iTunes and all of that. Right, back to the game. Starship Troopers Extermination is a PvE first-person shooter co-op game where it's you as the Marines fighting against hordes of bugs. When you load up, you can queue up with 16 people, which is pretty incredible because these games are pretty huge. I think there's five squads of four players in each squad, something like that. So it's a pretty big team. And when you've got everyone working together, it looks absolutely awesome. When you load it up, you've got three different difficulties, kind of easy, medium and hard. And it looks like there is a fourth difficulty that's not in the game yet because it's worth mentioning this is early access and it's very early access like there's loads of weapons and perks and things like that missing there's only one real map that i've seen although you see different parts fit in different games so it does feel a little bit different from game to game there's a lot of rough edges like we've had servers crash a couple of times and stuff like that so in all the footage you see just remember this is the first day of early access so i'm expecting it to improve quite a lot but yeah so four difficulties to choose from and then you also have three classes to choose from there's an assault class that uses an assault rifle and gets to fly around with a jetpack which is super useful just for kind of getting on top of walls getting away from bugs things like that then there's a heavy gunner class where you have an lmg and you can build a barricade around yourself really quickly which kind of pushes the bugs back lets you steady your weapon on the side of it that's super useful and then there's a support class that can heal and revive people a bit quicker anyone can revive people but they have like a little drone that follows them that does it and they can also do things like dropping ammo which is incredible be useful and they get to use sniper rifles when you load into the game you'll sort of pop out of your drop pod with your own little squad with the people that you queued up with and then you'll quickly get told about an objective and i think there's like three of these objectives as the game goes on and it could be pretty varied like some of them are just things like go repair these little beacons and you just have to go and repair a bunch of different ones and make sure they're all repaired at the same time so it helps to have like a squad defending each one or maybe you're going to have to defend these little resource mining things and they will dig up a load of stuff, put them in canisters and you have to carry the canisters somewhere else. Or maybe there'll be a bunch of really difficult bugs spawn and you just have to kill them all and survive. There's loads of different objectives. We've seen different ones in nearly every game we've played and some of them are much, much harder than others. Like that one where you're defending the resource collectors takes quite a long time. The one where really hard bugs appear is absolutely crazy. Like they are so strong you get a load of i mean some of these bugs some of them are like you get normal little ones that you can melee very very easy you get the bigger ones that are kind of the iconic ones from starship troopers that on hard can pretty much one shot you and are super dangerous then you get a bigger tiger striped armored version of those you get some sniper bugs that shoot you from a long way away that are super irritating then you get these giant siege bugs that fire these giant blue balls of plasma at you and will absolutely wreck any cover that you're hiding behind it does seem a little bit at the moment like you can't really fail these first set of objectives. Like, we got killed a bunch. We had some games where everybody died and it looked absolutely horrific. But you, we could just keep respawning. Like, if you die, you've got a little bit of time before you bleed out where someone can resurrect you. And if that doesn't happen, you just respawn at the base and can keep on going. So it does feel like, you know, I can't see any time limits or anything like that. Maybe you just keep going until you get those completed. Then eventually you'll get an objective where you need to build a base. So you need to go build the main part of the base, the kind of headquarters, and then something called an arc will be dropped down. And this is like this big pylon. And then everyone has two minutes to basically build a base. And this is awesome. It's a really cool twist on the whole kind of PV co-op shooter thing, you know, horde mode type thing that you're building your defenses, but you only have two minutes to do it. And you can build things like you can build some electrified fences, but you only have four of them between you as a team. You can build ammo dumps again, only four of them across the team. And then you can build normal walls. You can build ramps. You can build towers, a couple of automated turrets, and you kind of decide where to put stuff. 
at the moment, it's a little bit chaotic because a lot of people playing have only just started playing, obviously. It was only out a couple of hours when we played it. So a lot of people don't really know what to do. But essentially, you want to try and build as many defenses as you can and kind of layered defenses around that arc pylon. So we found the best way to do it was to build some electric fences around a pylon, then a bunker and some ammo and stuff like that. And then just start building layers and layers of walls with ramps and stuff to get up to them. Because the bugs will smash down some of your walls and it's really good to be able to kind of fall back a little bit, put some mines and stuff like that down and just try to keep having like layers of defenses. Because essentially this arc pylon after the two minutes is up is going to start doing something, charging or something. I don't really know what it does, but you need to defend it for quite a long time. Um, so the more time you can buy just by sort of having a layer of defenses to fall back on really, really helps. This is like the most exciting part of the game. It's so cool. Everyone up on the wall shooting, trying to ping different directions where enemies are coming in, where the big bugs are. The support people who are using sniper rifles can take out the shooting bugs that are ranged. There's people using rocket launchers that you get as rewards from doing the earlier objectives. It's just absolute chaos. But when it works well, when you've got like a really well set up defense, it feels incredible. Like it feels just like the scenes from the movies. And then if you're playing on hard, especially, the bugs will start overrunning you. The bugs will start coming faster than you can take them out. You'll need to start doing like ammo trips where you're running back to pick up more ammo. And while you're doing that, the bugs will start smashing down your defenses. They tear down walls, they tear down towers, and they'll start destroying the arc generator. And then whether you're successful or not with the mission, a dropship's gonna come. So if the arc generator gets destroyed, the arc pylon gets destroyed, a dropship will just be sent for you. Or if you manage to successfully defend it at the end of the time, a dropship will come. The dropship comes quite a long way away. So this makes for this cool moment where everyone basically abandons the base. Everyone grabs some ammo and then just starts running across the map to try and get to this dropship. The dropship has a couple of automated turrets so you can kind of sprint towards it. And then when you get there, there's this like, genius idea where there's a bunch of ammo at the back of it. And then on the front of it, there's like a little counter that tells you how many people are still alive, how many people are on the dropship and how many people have died. So then you're there trying to sort of defend your allies while they get back onto the ship, try and get as many people as you possibly can on. Then at the end of the game, you get like XP based on whether you completed the objective, how many bugs you killed, how many people managed to evacuate, all of that. And then there's some progression, like you unlock new guns, new abilities, new perks, all of that kind of good stuff. There's so many things that this game has just got right directly from the start. Like, first of all, the player count. It feels like there's a manageable amount of people. So yes, there's lots of people. It builds up that atmosphere of having like a proper squad of soldiers fighting. But there's also not too many people that it feels like you're not doing anything. Like you can constantly make the difference. You can be the kind of hero in lots of situations. And that's really cool. Loads of the games we were playing had people on proxy chat. You can use voice chat, you can use pings, you can use text chat. There's a lot of different ways to communicate. And people were doing that. It might have been because it was kind of an early access thing for content creators. So people who are maybe more willing to talk to each other. But it did feel like in most of the games we played, people were actually trying to work together. Secondly, the guns all feel really good. So far, I've used the assault rifle, the LMGs, one of the pistols, the uh, knife, and the rocket launcher. And all of them felt valuable. Like the assault rifle is really quick to reload and you can just sort of like move around and shoot lots of weaker targets very quickly. The LMG is awesome for sustained fire. If you try to hip fire it when you're not crouched or you're not aiming down sights, you will just end up firing all over the place. Like it'll literally spin you around with the recoil. But if you've got bunkered down with that character's ability, then it's super strong and you can put down a lot of fire very quickly. But then the reload takes a very long time, which is, you know, a massive trade off for it. The pistol feels really good as a backup. You know, if you need to switch to it, you can take down some of the bigger bugs, even on hard mode with it, which just feels amazing. The knife will kill the smaller bugs in one hit. So when they're rushing after you, especially when you're rushing to the dropship, that feels really cool to be able to kind of spin around and hit them because they're a bit faster than the other bugs, I think. And the rocket launcher is just spectacular. You can't have it as a first loadout. You have to get it as a reward. But if you are using it, it can just turn the tide of battle so easily. Like it feels pretty accurate and it does a huge amount of damage. But obviously it takes a while to reload. You don't get to carry too much ammo. And there is friendly fire in this game. So you can damage other people. You have to be a little bit careful with it and try not to like destroy your own structures with it. 
And thirdly, the bugs themselves just feel great right now. Like they are super lethal if they get close to you, but you can keep a whole herd of them pinned down fairly effectively with a few people shooting. Like there's a really good balance right now of if you can keep them at the distance, they feel super weak like you can just shred through them but as soon as they start getting on top of you it's hard to see it's hard to understand what to do and some of them can just one shot you and send you flying so there is like a real fear of them they feel threatening at all times which a lot of the time when i'm playing these kind of co-op shooters thinking you know left for dead or gears war horde mode and stuff like that i'm not really worried about any of the enemies like i'm hardly ever feeling tense in those situations but in this the bugs are genuinely a little bit scary so that's Starship Troopers Extermination. I'm definitely going to be streaming some more of this, going to be playing more of this. I'd love to try and get like 16 people who are all communicating in a Discord together and play it. If that ever happens, I think that will be absolutely amazing. That would be so much fun. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Head on over to Twitch and follow me there, twitch.tv forward slash geeky pastimes. And I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.